Hi folks, I'm Eath with Two Guys Are Ride, and welcome to our how-to video on the 2021 Toyota Tacoma, and this is the TRD Sport Trim. Today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Toyota of Mankato in Mankato, Minnesota. All right, so on the driver's information screen here, you've got an analog tack and engine temperature on the left, and you have an analog speedometer and fuel gauge on the right. Of course, miles per hour in the big numbers and kilometers per hour on the smaller numbers. Now in the middle, you have a digital uh, display screen, and this is where we can manipulate and change information. To do that, you're gonna use the controls on the right side of the steering wheel. You've got four arrows, an okay button, and a back button, and then I'll explain this button uh, at the end. All right, at the top of the screen, as I go, you're gonna see some icons here. You've got, um, you got an eye, you've got a car, you've got a triangle, and then you've got a gear wheel. So these are your main pages. You can see there's a little red line on the far right. That means I have more information in this page, so I can use the up or down arrows. Uh, to go. So I'm going to use the down arrows. Right now I just got a digital speedometer and a distance to empty, which is very nice. Then I get average fuel economy, and then I get down here to trip distance and time elapsed. I've got um, my tension minder, so if it senses my I'm weaving in and out of the lanes a little bit, maybe I need a rest, it will pop up and suggest that I take a break. And that little circle you see around the coffee cup um, the, the, the truck keeps track and, and starts to fill in each of those little sections and when it gets to uh, a whole circle, that's when it thinks you need a break. All right, and then this is what we call column page, so it's just blank. So if you're driving along like, I don't really want to see that, all that information, just take it off and you can go down there. That's the end of that list. Okay, if I click down again, it just brings me back to the top. Um, I'm going to go over to the right here and it brings me to the car icon. So right now it says cruise is off and uh, the, the lane departure is off. Now lane departure uh, is down here on the steering wheel. So if I click that, you'll see that that comes on. Um, it has to, right, has to be above 32 miles per hour, but you can see the white lines uh, on either side that, were, that would light up. Um, if I turn my adaptive cruise control on, that's a little button just to the right of the steering wheel, traditional Toyota placement there, okay? And then the, I can use the gap setting button, which is right here, and you can see the gaps. All right, so that's screen one. I'm gonna go down one more screen and I get tire pressure. All right, uh, let's go uh, over to the right. Warnings or messages, anything that pops up, low, you know, low um, windshield wiper fluid, low gas, whatever, those will, will pop up there, oil change minders, that kind of thing. All right, then we got one more that has a, a, quite a few things on it. First of all, you have your pre-collision system here, so if I click on that, uh, you can turn that on or off by clicking. I would definitely suggest leaving that on, and then you can change the sensitivity level, okay? This is less sensitive, and all the green dots, uh, green lines mean it's more sensitive. Okay. I'm going to push uh, the back button here. Lane departure assist. Okay, uh, you can set the sensitivity by clicking the OK button. Uh, that warning to take a, take a break for the driver, you can turn that off completely if it really bothers you right here, or leave it on, and you can change the sensitivity level uh, if it's on. All right, now, under settings here, uh, we've got several things. So let's go back up here. Okay, first of all, you can change the languages here. Push the back button. You can change units right here. And to do units right here, I'd have to click, and it changes to uh, miles per gallon imperial, then kilometers and then another version of kilometers, and then back to miles per gallon US. All right, down here for temperature, I just click and it will flip between Fahrenheit and Celsius. All right, I'm gonna hit the back button. Um, you have driver info one. All right, so for digital speed here, um, you, you can have like, do I want digital speed to show up? Do I want average fuel economy to show up? 
um, you, you can set that according to the driver. So each driver has a little bit of customization that they can do on that one screen. Okay, what, what do you want to see? Okay, and you can have up, do that for up to three people. Now, pop-up display, um, that's like when you get a phone call or a warning or something like that. You can change the brightness of that screen, and basically it's just a check mark, brighter or not brighter. Okay. Accent color, you see that, that right now that my, the line I'm using to scroll through is kind of red. I got a red line on the right. Well, this is where you change that, and you have your choice between these four colors. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on blue. Okay. Now, I'll get back to that button at the end. That's the button on the steering wheel I was talking about. Maintenance reset. If I go down here, I can reset that if I want by going up to yes and clicking on it. I, of course, I'm not going to do that. And then you have default settings. So if you mess up completely, you can go to default settings. All right, let's get back to this one, which is this button here. Basically, you can program this button to any one screen on the driver's information screen. So I'm going to go back. In fact, I'm going to go back to the very beginning here. All right. So you, you remember before I had speed and I changed driver one to average fuel economy? All right. So what I'm going to do is say, I, 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 I like that one. So at any screen that you like, and it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. Okay, can't, can't do this one. But um, let, 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 let's just say it's this one. If I hit this button and hold it, do I want to customize the button to that screen? Yes. Now, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go, okay, let's just say I'm driving along, I'm here and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I want to see my cruise control stuff. A quick push of this button now will bring me to that screen. But you can do that for any one of the screens that the, the truck has, besides the very last one for settings. Click OK. All right, so now again, if I'm way over here doing something, and I say, ooh, I want to get back to that. Quick click makes it uh, come back. Then, of course, out you got the top. You've got your uh, some icons for lane departure, assist, the cruise control, the outside temperature, a little warning uh, emblem that's kind of cold, and then down below you've got your odometer. All right, that is it for the driver's information screen. Next, we'll move over to the infotainment screen. Okay, the infotainment screen is eight inches, is measured diagonally. It comes with uh, AM and FM radio, comes with Sirius XM, Bluetooth. Uh, it is Amazon Alexa capable. Uh, that's not built in, it's not an app, but it is capable um, through uh, the, the, uh, the phone app. Uh, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are a wired connection through the USB A port that's in the front. Okay. On the sides of the screen, you do have some physical buttons. You got home, menu, audio, map. You got a push for power. And if I push and hold, the screen goes off. Uh, over here, you have a tune and scroll. Okay, so this will be like for radio. So if I have my audio on, you can see the, the station's changing above. So this is a traditional scroll button. You've got a seek forward, seek backwards, or track forward and backwards for, you know, like Pandora or something else. You've got a dedicated phone button, and then you've got an apps button. It also has a six speaker sound system. The home button is, is what you see here, and you uh, can click on any one of these, and it will bring you to that screen. All right, uh, the menu button brings you to all of the apps that are on the vehicle. Press the phone button, and here we are. So right now I'm connected via Bluetooth. This does have Apple CarPlay. It is a wired connection. I'll show you that in a little bit here. But I want to show you Bluetooth as well. So basically you have your histories, favorites, contacts, your keypad, you can select a device. You can only have one device hooked via Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay at a time. Okay. Um, uh, and then you can look at messages. Right? So that's how it looks with Bluetooth. All right, so then apps, you can uh, hook up the Wi-Fi and you can see any vehicle notifications that have come through. 
So let's go back to menu for a minute and let's click on audio. This is going to bring us to radio. If I want to check my different sources, I click on source button and I've got AM, FM, Sirius XM and Bluetooth right now. If I want to reorder that, I just click the button here and I'm going to say, well, I'm going to have this one go first. I want FM second and so on. Just hit OK. And now that's the way it is. Those are the ones I use most often. They're closest to me. All right. If I wanted to see my presets, there they are. And you have several pages of them. Um, you can look at a station list. You can look at options. All very typical stuff for uh, Sirius XM. Now, if I go down to sound, this is where I can adjust the, 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 the sound. And this is not a click drag. You have to use the buttons. I, I do wish they were a click drag, but, but that's the way they are. I can look at fade and balance. And again, can't click and drag. What you can do is just use the buttons. All right, hit the back button there. Uh, automatic sound leveler. And you can adjust the sens sensitivity, high, medium, low. Again, the, f the, the noisier it is in the cab, so basically the faster you're driving, the louder the sound gets, and the quieter it is in the cab, the softer the music gets. And what it tries to do is keep the volume exactly the same to your ear, to what you're hearing, uh, no matter how you're driving. All right. So let's go back to Sirius XM for a minute. So in Sirius XM, if you want to save a station, it's, it's just a click hold. And there you go. Uh, what, what I like is that this screen is going to look pretty much the same for Sirius XM, AM, and FM. So let's just go check that out. I'm going to go to FM for a minute. Here's all your presets. Here's your sound. Here's your uh, sources. Uh, I mean, just so much the same. I'm going to go back to source for a minute. I'm going to go to AM. It will be pretty much the same. And there you go. And it all works the same. So if you can run one of them, you can run the others. I'm going to hit menu for a minute. Go back to audio. If I am on source and I select Bluetooth, now it's coming through my phone. Right? And so you got play, uh, skip forward, skip backwards. Um, and uh, I think that's mix and then loop. So it'll randomly select tracks and this one will just loop a track. Okay. Now that's all Bluetooth and, and that works well. And if that's what you're used to um, and, and you're most comfortable with, that's certainly an option on this vehicle. However, there's a much nicer way to do it. And that's if you take your USB cable and plug it into your phone and use Apple CarPlay. So I'm going to plug this in, just swipe up, turn my phone on. And in a minute, there we go. Uh, very, very quick. Uh, this does have a wireless charger, which is really nice. You can turn that on or off. But honestly, if you're connected via Apple CarPlay with the cable, you're already charging your phone. So maybe your passenger can make use of that. All right. Apple CarPlay, uh, if you've never used it, it's just phenomenal. Um, and, and if you have a vehicle with it, I'd really suggest taking a while in your driveway to figure this out with the car running. So. Basically, it takes every app that can work with your vehicle's infotainment and puts it up in the screen so you don't have to touch your phone. These three right here are the most recently used things. This switches you back and forth between a couple of different pictures. So here's all the apps that work with it that are on my phone. But you notice I've got Waze, I've got Google Maps, um, Apple Maps, along with, you know, things like Apple Music, uh, Amazon Music, uh, Pandora. So, and I, I, I have Sirius, Sirius XM app. I could use that from there, too. Um, but it's so nice that you don't have to reach down and do anything with your phone. This is a split screen. You've got navigation, got some navigation commands. You can activate navigation using voice. You've got media. If I press it again, then it's, then it's just the apps. Now, if I click on any one of these, this one or this one, okay, it goes to a full screen. This one's going to want me to make a, a, a choice, okay? Uh, and then if I click on media, it goes full screen. If you get a text message, it goes, uh, you'll see a little red dot here, and you'll also see a little message number pop up. The nice thing is it uses either Siri or Google Assistant, depending on your phone, um, and basically, other than the first 
click, everything is touch free. So it'll say, you have a message from, do you want to listen to it? It'll play it for you. Do you want to respond? You just say yes. All that without having to take your eyes off the road. Now, uh, Toyota has built in an app. You may be thinking, well, I can press the home screen, but what's this Toyota app? Well, if I click on it, okay, it's going to bring me back to Bluetooth audio. Um, and it's not connected right now because I'm running through Apple CarPlay. That's what that does. All right, so I'm going to go back here to source, and I'm just going to go Nathan's phone. And now it's back to Bluetooth again. It's switched. But I can go down here and say I want Apple CarPlay, and now I'm back. Now, let me show you something. This vehicle uh, did not have navigation on it. However, that is not an issue with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So I'm going to use Siri on my phone to open navigation and to plot a route for me. So on my left side of my steering wheel, I have a voice command button. You just push and hold it until you hear the little chime for the assistant. Siri, open Google Maps and navigate to McDonald's. Here's what I found. And I click Get on it. Directions to McDonald's using Google Maps. And here we go. I hit start. Head east toward Rangery Road. And if I want to, I can press the voice command button again and hold it down. Google use Siri. Road. And use Siri to say start. Okay. So I mean you have navigation. It's right there and it's full screen. Just click it again and I'll just tap exit. But phenomenal um, addition to vehicle, modern vehicles, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Okay, let's go back to menu for a minute. And if I look at phone, our apps here, I just get vehicle notifications and then I can uh, set up Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but that's where that is. Apple CarPlay, I've already showed you. If I go to Info, I can look at uh, some eco history. So your average speed after start, elapsed time after start, the range. I can look at the actual history. It'll give you bar graphs. It doesn't have one right now, but that's there. You can update it. You can clear it out. I'm going to hit the back button here. Okay, and I'm going to hit the back button one more time. I'm going to go to Vehicle Alert History. So I can look at any maintenance that's required, or I can delete history. I'm going to go back here to menu, and the last one here is setup. So over here is your basic uh, menus, and then over here is what is contained in each menu. So under general, you can set the clock. Okay, we saw the spot for that uh, uh, in the driver's information screen. That was just very basic, but it was there. Um, click menu again. If I just click on the clock, I get the same thing. So, but it's sort of redundant. It's there. Um, you can change the language there. Uh, projection settings. Well, right now it's Apple CarPlay. Uh, Android Auto is turned off, but if I wanted that on, I, I could do that, okay? Um, but I'd have to hook up a phone with it. Hit menu here, set up again. Customize the home screen. All right. Okay, I want this one right here. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to stick with this one, and what I'm going to do is take that one, and I'm going to click on here. So, it's not a click drag, it's a click and click. I would like my clock to be at the top, and I want my phone to be at the bottom where it is. Okay, if I go, I can go back here, but if I go back to home, so I have media, time, and then you might say, well, wait a minute, you set it to phone. Yep, I did, and if I were connected via Bluetooth, the actual phone would show up, but because when I'm connected through Apple CarPlay, Apple CarPlay shows up, because that is my phone. All right, now, um, let's click menu again. Let's go back to setup. You can turn that beep sound that you're hearing on or off. Theme setting, okay? You saw how we could customize some of the colors on the driver's information screen. Well, this is where you do it for the infotainment screen. So if I want everything to be kind of a black, blacker background with red, I could do that. And, you, and it changes right on you. More of a white. Okay. I, I actually kind of like that best. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, all right. See this little up arrow? 
if I click on it and it collapses everything and brings me back to the page I was on. So instead of a back button, they make it easy by doing it there. Here's where you change your units of measurement. Um, you can choose a different kind of a keyboard layout if you want, uh, a delete keyboard history. Apparently it keeps track when you type things in. Um, if you say memorize keyboard history off, then uh, you can do that. Now, the, the advantage of having it on is as soon as you start typing something you've typed a lot, it automatically pops up a suggestion for you. Animation. So animation is when you start up the vehicle and you have little things appear on, appear on the digital screens. You can have that on or off. Gauges go, you know, different directions. Okay, going down. We're still under general. You got all of this stuff. So what I'm, what I'm going to do, just point out here, is if you're selling a vehicle, this is where you go to delete all your personal data out of the vehicle before you sell it. Okay, so that would be an important one to know. Driver setting, okay, you can do some stuff like audio presets, colors, uh, language to a phone. You can enable that. I'm not going to, but you could do that that way. If two people are driving this vehicle, depending on the phone they come in with, it'll set those things uh, as soon as the phone pairs with the car. All right, let's go down. I, as, Bluetooth is grayed out because I'm not connected via Bluetooth. If I go down to audio, uh, I've got a common tab here, and I can have display cover art. That's a little picture that shows up with the with the radio um, when the radio is playing a station or something, okay? And I can make this a, a priority display using the Grace Note database. Basically, there's a couple different sources where infotainment systems get their pictures from. Grace Note is uh, one of the major ones. So you can have that off for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. Phone straight out again because I have Apple CarPlay. Voice command. All right, you can say, you know, here's where you adjust the volume of voice command. And again, it's a click. You can't drag anything. Your voice prompt, uh, voice recognition prompts. When they speak at you, do you want them high, medium, or low? And you're not going to know that until you, you try it a couple times. You can train voice recognition, and that is something you might want to do, just so it understands your voice uh, in, in the best way that it can. All right, I'm going to go down here. Under Vehicle, um, I have, of course, Dealer Info. Right here, I'd have to program that in. Okay? And then I have a valet mode that I can turn on. i got to enter a, a digit code here. Vehicle Customization. You can customize your door lock settings, so like auto lock by speed, on or off. Takes a little bit to respond. Uh, remote to press. Well, if I press once, it's driver's door. If I press twice in a row, it's all the doors. So many things here. Now, you want lights to flash when you lock or unlock, you can turn that feature on there. And then the feedback tone that you get, you can set that uh, for when you hit those buttons. All right, I'm going to go back. Climate settings. Okay, here's where you can turn the auto AC mode on or off. And then light settings. All right, so this has automatic headlights. So you can turn the sensitivity of that uh, up or down. Here's the advantage. So on vehicles with auto, uh, auto on lights, you know, it, it, as it gets to a certain level of darkness, your lights automatically pop on, which means your front lights and your taillights are on. This is different from daylight, uh, daytime running lights, which is down here. That's just your front lights. The problem is, depending on your preferences, you may want the headlights to come on earlier or later. Well, going like this makes them come on later, like as it gets even darker. Clicking the plus button makes them come on earlier. And a good example of this is uh, bad weather. At least in the state of Minnesota, you are supposed to have your headlights on, on during inclement weather. Well, if your auto headlights are on, but they're not actually turning on the lights, it doesn't do you much good. So here's where you can adjust that. And that's one of the improvements, you know, vehicles have made in the last couple of years. Uh, you did not used to have a setting where you could change that sensitivity. And now it's almost on all vehicles, but there it is. You can also tell your headlights to shut off after uh, 90 seconds or that as low as 30 seconds just to give you a little time to get to the front door after you've exited the vehicle with the lights still on. Okay? Now, daytime running lights, those are the front lights. They, they, as soon as you start the vehicle and put it in drive, 
they're on. It, it, they won't come on when they're in park, typically, but they will come on as soon as you put it in, in this case, this is a manual, so it'll be in first gear. And then interior lights, when you get in, you close the door, you like the dome lights to stay on for a little bit, but then automatically fade out. Well, you can set that anywhere from turning off instantly to waiting 30 seconds. All right, I'm gonna go back one here. Uh, and then we already talked about Wi-Fi here. Uh, this is where you can set up, turn it on, and then uh, hook up the password. If I go down here, then you got uh, some other information related to that. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the menu button again. And the last thing to show you is the display button down here. I can turn the screen off. Okay, but everything is still running behind there. I just push home button to bring it back. The other thing you can adjust down here is just the general brightness of the screen itself. Uh, not the camera, just the whole, in general, the whole screen. So you can adjust the contrast, the brightness, and then you can do a couple different, um, you can look at what it looks like. So this is the radio, this is like the radio screen. Um, yeah, those are the two screens you get to look at. Um, this one's kind of nice because you can kind of see what the colors are and see what looks best to you in what, what contrast and brightness level. All right, and then under camera, you can make the same adjustments for the backup camera. And if I uh, just, yeah, you can just click and change. I wish they were click and drag, but, but at least they have them. Okay, uh, so that is it for the infotainment screen on the 2021 Toyota Tacoma. And again, this is the TRD Sport trim level. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.